Okay, guys, I've started recording. Uh, Shannon just got back to me and is uh, traveling. She does training today, and she's doing another one tomorrow. Um, and she's trying to hop on, but is having problems. But we're just going to turn it over to Aaron and let him uh, go for it. And Aaron, I've started recording. Perfect. Sorry. It's all yours, buddy. This is going to be awesome. Excellent. Well, uh, good evening, everyone. I'm really excited to be part of this and help you get a better understanding of the Makey Makey. Um, so I know some of you probably have experience. Some of you maybe are brand new to it. Some of you maybe had a chance to play around with the kit if it arrived in time. Um, maybe some of you haven't had a chance to do any of that. And so um, what I thought we would do this evening is really kind of keep it open-ended in terms of I'm going to share a couple things up front, um, a couple little things for you to kind of think about in terms of um, planning for trainings going forward, because there are some things that are happening that you just might need to be aware of in the back burner. Um, and then kind of open it up to some questions and ideas that you have. Um, I know that in the in, in the team, there's a huge 37 page document for the Maker Makey, for the Makey Makey training guide from the workshop from uh, Tom Heck, who is the VP of, of Makey Makey. And that has literally everything you would ever need to do in order to pull off a five hour workshop um, with that. And so we can dive into that a little bit either. Um, so I'm trying to follow along in, in, in the chats as well. So it looks like some of you haven't received a kit yet. Um, I haven't received a kit yet myself, but just because I'm a nerd, I have 18,000 of them in my, in my basement. That's probably part of the reason why my wife calls me a hoarder maybe. Um, but, um, before we dive into the makey makey stuff, for those that don't know who this tall, bald, ugly guy is talking to you, uh, my name is Aaron Maurer. I'm from uh, Bedworth, Iowa. Spent 14 years teaching in a middle school. Um, I now work for uh, 21 school districts in the eastern side of Iowa in all things STEM. Um, so that's coding and robotics and any makerspace and learning design spaces, all that good stuff. Um, so um, I spent all my time there. Um, just helping and supporting schools, and it's been been a, a really amazing journey. Um, and so my passions are really anything hands-on, whether we're talking the Makey Makey device here. Um, some of you have done stuff with the with the micro bits in the Make Code website and Minecraft Education. I also do a lot with Lego Education, um, one of their education ambassadors, and so do a lot of trainings and things on that. So uh, really, if it's anything nerdy, um, it's right up my alley. So. Um, as I'm looking through some of these things here um, that don't have a kit, what I thought maybe let's, let's just kind of break through kind of a quick overview of what in the world the Makey Makey is. Um, so you have an understanding of that. And if you don't have one, uh, when you get it, maybe it'll, some of that will make sense. What it basically is, is this little device here. Um, and if you're old like me, um, this looks very much like an old Nintendo, the 8 bit controller with the up down right, left, and basically like the BA buttons. Um, the Makey Makey at the most simplest level is just a keyboard. This is why it's so effective and amazing, especially when, when getting teachers comfortable with tech and coding and programming, um, because you literally plug it in through a USB into your, in your computer and it works. You don't have to do any coding. You don't have to load any software. You don't have to do anything. Once it's plugged in, it becomes a keyboard. Um, and on there, if you have one, but if not, you can program on the very simple level, um, up, down, right, left. Um, this one here is for the space bar, and this is like a click on the mouse. You can get things more advanced, which we won't dive into today, since some of you don't have your, your kits. Um, I, I won't overwhelm you with all that, but just know that on the back side, there are a lot more options for you. Um, with other keystrokes, you can program um, LED lights to turn on. You can do a lot of more advanced things. Um, for those that have done some coding or physical computing, this runs on an Arduino platform. This is basically a little Arduino that's tucked in here. Um, so you can actually do some really high level stuff with Arduino coding if that's something that um, you have some experience with. And so what I like about the Makey Makey um, is right now we're running a, a summer school program for it's the second poorest school in the state of Iowa and we have kindergartners and first graders kids who can't read are writing their own interactive stories and they'll be using the makey makey to have their stories come to life uh, we've used it with middle 
school students, and we use it all the way up through eighth grade, or not eighth grade, excuse me, up through high school. Uh, we just wrapped up a project. I got to get the pictures and the videos posted. We just created covering eighth grade algebra class, their geometry standards, and we use scratch programming and the makey makey to show proficiency of those standards. So there's a lot of entry points with this makey makey when you get going. Um, and so um, as you dive in here, I put in the team drive and I'll throw it in here in, in the chat. There are several websites um, that are on there that you can use. There is, I know, um, Jen Morgan shared the official Makey Makey trainer website, which will do everything that you need for your workshops with the teachers when you do your Makey Makey training. Um, with the permission of Tom Heck, the, the VP of Makey Makey, I have created my own website. Um, not that it's any better, but I'm going to plug it in here. It's also in the team. Um, in case you can't find it back in this chat. And the reason I'm sharing this is I've done a couple things in here. It looks pretty similar to what he's created. But what I have found when I was doing these trainings with teachers, um, even though we had an amazing day of learning, they were really hesitant in terms of the next steps, right? Like, how do we, I had this awesome day. I learned that I could do something I didn't know how to do. But I'm going to go back to my classroom tomorrow, and I'm going to be too scared to actually use this in the classroom and so what i did on this on this website um and let's see if i can switch over to the screen share without lagging too bad here um hopefully you can see my my screen um on here the maker workshop looked is all the different steps through the course of the day which is what you have on the other makey makey website but i designed this self-paced course so teachers can go back and do this themselves. Um, but what we've designed it here for is that each of these steps take about 20 minutes. And so teachers now have a flipped classroom already created for them to get kids to learn. And so this is designed when you go into these steps. I went through and made these short little videos um, and their little challenges. They submit all their answers to a flip grid and they could easily just swap this out and, and make it their own flip grid. But it gives them their own little thing, short little videos. Every single video is under under five minutes and the kids can do their baseline learning. And so this has been really effective this year. Um, I've had four schools test it out and give feedback. And what they do is they, they kind of do like station rotation uh, where Teachers are working with small groups so you can be proficient with standards, but then one of the stations is the Makey Makey, which then will eventually lead into a project um, within their classroom. And so I'm sharing that not as a self plug, but just so you know that there is a self paced course. Um, and Tom Heck is going to be eventually putting it on the Makey Makey website for people to use, but it works its way all the way down. And down here, um, this educator deploy or die. Um, are a bunch of teacher examples from workshops that I've done. Um, and so you can see the work that teachers have created. Um, I've provided the password here so you can see there's I don't, there's no students being shared in these, uh, but you can click on these um, and you can see what teachers have created from preschool to Montessori schools all the way up through, um, I think the latest round goes up to like eighth grade. Um, so you can see that in there and then I'm building a self-paced course too. This is going to be a more advanced course um, that'll be ready to go by, by the fall um, in August before the next school year. So um, that's going to be in there. So I just wanted to share that with you. It's a great resource, especially if you're trying to help teachers who have a great day of learning, but they don't know how to go and create it. A lot of times if they can just have um, something to start with is, is what we found to be really invaluable. Um, and so it's already done for them. I, I, well, the, the, the mindset we have there is that we are, I, I feel like we need to try to create ways. So it's not just one great day of learning, but there's a seamless transition into the classroom. And so if we can alleviate some of that low level stuff, like this flipped learning, like teaching kids what a circuit is, teaching kids, you know, how the makey makey works, we can do that in video and then the application of learning is when the teacher can come back and be involved. And we've just we found that to be really successful in the schools that we've been been, been working with um, when we tested this out. We've had four schools, two elementaries and two middle school. So we've got a wide variety of feedback and, it, and it's been, been pretty good. So feel free to use that. And if you don't like it, I'll just 
don't use it, but it's, it's, it's there for you. Um, and so, um, what kind of questions do you have? I, I could go in and dive into some demos. Um, if there's particular questions that you have, um, maybe just throw those in, in the chat. And maybe I'll, I'll try to cover those. Um, and while you're typing some things in here, I want to give you just uh, probably the biggest caveat, the biggest asterisk that you're going to need to be aware of um, that isn't anywhere yet. Um, and then we'll get into making something here real quick here, Brad. Um, um, the makey makey, when you get into the coding level of stuff, besides this making a circuit, having something light up, um, uses Scratch. Um, and many people are comfortable with Scratch. Um, maybe, maybe many of you are comfortable with Scratch. Um, you have to remember that come August 1st of this fall, Scratch is being revamped to Scratch 3.0. And so it's getting a complete overhaul. So I don't know if you, any of you had a chance to check out the preview build and actually mess around with that a little bit, but the whole screen looks different. It's not radically different, but you just need to be aware that if you are thinking about creating some demos um, or tutorial videos come August, it's going to look different. Um, so just be aware of that. Uh, if, if you're thinking about those next steps, if you get involved in this makey makey, you're going to have to redo them um, because Scratch 3.0 comes out. It's August 1st or 3rd. I can't remember what day it is. The nice thing that that'll be is it'll Scratch will work on all tablets and phones, which is something that hasn't happened. I think the pressure of Make Code, to be honest, has really uh, thrown some some pressure on them, and so that's going to be nice for a lot of districts um, that maybe don't have devices for every, every single student. So just something to uh, keep in mind as, as you're working. So let's get into making. Um, I know Bradley's getting rambunctious over there, and so we got to make sure we keep him happy. I see that he spends 29 hours uh, building cars all the time, so I know he's ready to get moving. So if you have a kit or if you don't have a kit, one of the first things, I'm going to move this, this screen down here a little bit. One of the first things before we even get into a makey makey is to make sure that um, that teachers understand what a circuit is. And so one of the very simplest things that we need to do and the very first activity is, and you, you have this in your kit whenever you receive it, you give them a, a nine volt battery, you give them the alligator clips, um, and then you give them their Play-Doh and an LED light. And it's just these materials, and without any instruction, you tell them that you need to go forth and you need to make a circuit. Because the whole making, making, operates on creating circuits with most of the time you being the actual um the the bond that, that actually creates the circuit the electricity that you're conductive through your human hands and so you give them these and so if you haven't if you have these materials around um go ahead and try and if you don't then you can maybe just draw it on paper i've done it both depending on the amount of time frame that i have where i've had people do it on paper this is a great lesson to prove the power of hands-on learning have them go on a piece of paper and say draw a circuit with these materials and they draw it and it's really kind of boring and it's quiet and no one's real excited especially because it's early in the morning and the coffee and caffeine hasn't kicked in and then you give them these materials to say now make a circuit and the people that don't know what a circuit is on the paper, they give up in like 20 seconds. Like they don't even know what to draw, so they just quit. But then we get in the hands-on and you can just feel the energy of the room. So they have their nine volt and they can just start messing around, plugging things in and they'll start to, they're not sure if, they can, if they're allowed to clip in. Some people think like, if you do this, it's actually gonna shock and hurt them. So some people are really scared. Others jump into it right away. If someone will inevitably get a light to turn on very, very quickly. And when they do, the energy in the room changes. Uh, people get really excited. And all of a sudden, everybody's like, show me how to do that. Show me how to do that. And all of a sudden, you have this like cycle of learning and teaching, which is really what we want in every classroom. And it changes everything. And so in this case, we just plug in. You clip on these alligator clips onto the plus and negative of the 9-volt battery. And then you just go ahead. And when you plug these in, Okay, in my case, the battery, the light isn't working. So we're going to say, oh, my, maybe my battery's dead. Because a lot of times people don't realize that there's a long leg and a short leg on the LED. I'm trying to get my, my camera lens here. Um, so the long leg is the positive, 
the short leg is the negative. And so then you can show them the positive and negative on the nine volt battery. Those are always labeled. And when you link those up correctly, then you have a light. And so right away in the first 20 minutes of the session, you have success. Um, someone has talked on there. I see it on there already about uh, sticking the tongue on the battery. So then we actually get into that as well. And I actually have them do that. Um, so many will actually like flat out refuse to do it, but we go through and once we have that, they start to feel like a kid again. And then as we have them like lick the battery, I've done other things too, where um, just because you were mentioning that, if you have a multimeter, you can do this. And if you're kind of brave enough, if you want to take it beyond sticking your tongue out, you can actually clip the alligator clips to your skin. I mean, it hurts a little bit, and you can see then how your skin's conductive. And so you can put the multimeter to your skin, create a circuit, and you'll see that a, a small ring will pop up. And then just because I'm always drinking coffee, I'll, I'll pour coffee on my arm and do the same thing. And we get more electricity. It's more conductive. So then we move into that kind of conversation of what's conductive, what's an insulator. Um, and then when I, when I create the circuit, like it does, it does hurt. It sends a shock to your skin. And so then we have people try that out. And, you know, next thing you know, the energy of the room is completely changed. And we just take a small moment right there to go, okay, let's think back to when you were drawing it on paper. Like which classroom atmosphere did you enjoy it just as a learner right now? And then the reflection is how much of this are you doing? in your own classroom like this doesn't cost you anything this doesn't take any more or less time and yet we've got more people engaged and, and learning and doing and so we start a lot with that and just trying to understand through a very understanding of what a circuit looks like and how it works also talking about that kind of classroom application um as as, as we get going that way and so um, Bradley got his hair to stand up. You can see what happened. I've done it too many times. It just eventually falls out. So, um, you know, be careful. Um, so once we go out from there, the next challenge could be, and um, you can go through, and the next step would be then to create a switch. And so while they have the nine volt battery out and why they have this LED, um they're going to be going through there and and checking these things out the next step is we give them a piece of foil and we now tell them that they have to create a switch so what happens here is i give them the hint that they have to have three play-doh um, balls here or whatever it is that you want to have and as we go through and work here now they have to figure out how in the world can we do this where when a piece of foil hits another piece of Play-Doh, it turns on an LED light? This is mimicking like a light switch in your house um, at a very, very slow pace kind of understanding of how these, these work. And so once again, they've got to understand the plus and minus of their battery. And if you have these things at home, you can go ahead and try to figure this out yourself. Um, but if not, you just can watch, which I know isn't anywhere near as uh, enjoying um, and enjoyable. So what we'll do is, and what will happen is people will start to do this. Their light will be on because that's just what they did. And they'll try to like touch this foil and it doesn't do anything. And you'll start to see like all these weird different things. Um, and they have to keep trying to figure it out. And so eventually they will start to realize like, oh, I need to create this system of communication where now the energy of the electricity is flowing. And this is like the bridge that turns the light on and off going this way um, this takes some time um, when we go through here and you look at the workshop a lot of times it, it feels like it's moving fast they don't need to be experts of electricity they just need to understand some of the concepts of how things are are, are working so when they get to the makey makey it makes sense in terms of how the makey makey also is, is is working so we get into this and now they're really starting to groove by this point, you're going to have several people who are going to have two or three lights going. And so you, if you wanted to, depending on um, the, the, the intelligence of the group, you could have them start to get into series or parallel circuits, which I won't get into tonight, but it's on the site if, if you want to learn. You can really start to challenge some people. Um, Kylie asked a really good question. How much help do you give? Um, during this early phase, it's all about experimenting like i really don't provide much at all because it's it's 
not a big deal, but I move fast through this. So I would, I would do all this circuit stuff. I go through that. Maybe sometimes I think it's too fast, but I want them to get into their own learning more time in the afternoon. So lots of experimenting, but I would do all this in maybe 30 minutes. And so we talk about it once they see it, it's amazing how much they quickly copy each other and they figure it out. Um, if they're really, really stuck, I would always, I always demo so they can see it and take pictures and then they usually just copy it and away they go. Um, and so it doesn't take real long. It's just the right away to get them engaged in this hands-on, like, okay, this is what a circuit looks like. Great. Um, and so, um, that part is really fascinating. Um, we talked about why and how the Play-Doh is part of the circuit. So during this part too, depending on, on your time, another great activity that we do is in the room. And so we look at Play-Doh and like someone will ask like, why Play-Doh? And we talk about because it's it has the conductive principles. There's moisture in it. There's there's uh, there's minerals in it. And then we could go through and we could change this out. And so we could tell them we go around the room. And sometimes you have time for this. Sometimes you don't. And they have to find three things that are conductive and three things that are insulators or non-conductive. And so we talk about those words. And so people will quickly realize that um, cardboard doesn't do anything. Like it doesn't doesn't light anything up. It's not conductive. Uh, but my skin's conductive, water is conductive, um, foil, um, yes, slime does does work, yes. And so um, I think we've got some videos, I don't know if I have them on YouTube or not, uh, but it, it, that works very well. Pennies are conductive. So anything metallic, um, fruit, and so when you see the Makey Makey videos, um, you often see the bananas. And so anything fruit works, uh, you know, and so they can just go around and explore and they just have these great conversations and we just come right back to you have all these things in your classroom once again it doesn't cost you anything um, and kids love to do that like that's the greatest way if you if you a quick little vocab lesson of conductive insulators go find things that work and don't work and then you have these conversations about why um, and then boom away you go um, and so there's just another little kind of short activity there there in the morning when we get going um, the next step then is to move this and translate it kind of into the Makey Makey itself. And so once we get to circuits, um, you're, you're going, you're rocking, and now they're like, okay, so what does this have to do with Makey Makey? Um, and so we start to explain then during that point that the Makey Makey is just that. It's a keyboard it's a, and it's a circuit. So that's what it needs. And so... At that point, we open up the contents of their, their Makey Makey box. And what they're gonna get in the box is you're gonna get the Makey Makey itself, which is this bad boy right here. Um, in there, you're gonna get several alligator clips. I think there's six or seven in there. I can't remember off the top of my head um, that they use to clip into the ports, which I'll show you here in just a minute. And they're also gonna receive in there these little white wires, um, which you can make yourself. Um, they think they're special wires, um, and they're not. And these plug into the back in these little tiny ports. Um, they can plug in right in there, and then they hold pretty well. Um, so you can make these yourself with any kind of wire, and you just kind of do a nice little solder tip, and you can make these cheap on the fly and make these as long as you want. So we've made projects that extend an entire hallway of, a, of our middle school um, and you just take out like old speaker wire and you, and you can make that work. So we look through that and we, and we talk about the Makey Makey itself. So um, let's dive into one of these here. Um, so I'm gonna plug this in. Let me find my cable here. And if you guys have any questions along the way, please feel free. Sometimes I get going a thousand miles an hour and I realize like, it's a little too fast. And so on the Makey Makey, there's a little tiny port. This just plugs right in. And you know you have power because um, there is a light that will show you the power. So that lets you know that you're good to go. Um, and we are basically ready to rock. And so we talk about how the human body is conductive. And we are this piece a foil like our body can be this foil right here which is why we do this activity um, and so we talk about here are these buttons so down here is your ground right here 
And these are like your positive. So your plus and negative is, is how I explain it, even though I know it's not pure accurate electrical terms, but it makes sense when we talk about how we went from the Play-Doh and the foil and the plus minus on the battery. So I could touch this up here and I could touch this ground and you're gonna, I'll flip it around as you can see, and we're gonna get a signal. Now, if I went to screen sharing, this would actually scroll my web browser up and down. I could hit down, it would scroll my browser down because remember, this is a keyboard. So it overrides um, my regular keyboard in the sense that I could go to the touch the right. And every time you can see those lights turn on, that tells me the circuit's been complete. Um, and so we start with our hands. Um, just so they can kind of see how this circuit works. And then they're going to get curious, and that's when these alligator clips start to come in handy because these alligator clips clip perfectly into these holes. And so if I wanted to run something here in this up, I just clip it right in there. And then for the sake of this demo, I could plug this right into this piece of Play-Doh here for up, and I could do another one right down here for into my ground wherever I wanted to go I can use any of these ports these are all the same like doesn't these don't matter at all and then nothing's happening on my on my makey makey but if I touch these two it lights up like I complete the circuit the electricity is able to go all the way through by touching these and so now we're starting to create our own game devices our own kind of joysticks and controllers so to speak and then we start to scale these out. And so then we move into the activity of making your own video game. Um, you could go to this website here if you want to jump in before the video game. There's two of these. And this is also all in those documents. So um, you don't have to memorize these. But um, there is this one here, which is a piano. And there's another one called the banjo, I believe, or not banjo, I mean drum, sorry. And these will take the people to these sites. They still have, have not had to do any coding to have success. And so when I go to these, and I'll go to screen share here in just a minute. I can jump over on this and I can now use my makey makey when I hit these, the, the ground or the earth and the up, it'll play the piano. I know you can't see me, um, but I'm just simply pinching the ground or the earth on the makey making and just hitting the up, down, and right. And so now we already have a conductive kind of keyboard right there. And this gets them really excited about getting started um, in, the, in, in the possibility of what we could do with the makey makey. And so there's a drum and there's a piano in those uh, for people to kind of look at. Once that happens, now the gears are turning. And that's when we jump into trying to go into video games. Some people will naturally go right to it. So you can pull up any kind of game online. Uh, we start with the games that require just a one button press. And so that would be um, like Mario could be that a little bit. Um, Flappy Bird is probably the, the best one to go to because you just hit the button, make the bird jump. Um, and then that's when the cardboard and the foil and those other materials in the kit come in handy. Uh, where we can go through and you, you challenge them to make a one button controller. And so what they will do is they will take that, that cardboard square and you put foil on it, you create a little divider. And then when they press that with the alligator clips, it, it completes the circuit because the foil is conductive and then it makes the bird jump. You can do it with Play-Doh as well. So if you don't want to get to the cardboard and foil quite yet, you can have them do it with the Play-Doh, where they just tap the Play-Doh. Um, and there's tons of things online where you can see where people will create um, the joystick, where like the up, down, right, left, it would have looked like this. And they can have their alligator clips all in there and they basically replicate the makey-makey. And so as they're putting the buttons, it'll do those different kind of joysticks. 
So this part here, we get them to think about making a controller for the video games. Um, the energy and the excitement really takes off. They love playing the games. They start playing games from their youth, they, and they they just start to go. Well, okay, well, I want to play Pac-Man. Okay, well, Pac-Man doesn't work uh, with just one button. So now, how do you wire to go up, down, right, left? And then they start to experiment with that makey-makey. And once again, it's just them experimenting. You give them little tips, and the little pieces of advice. I mean, it's just like when you're in a classroom. Uh, you don't want to give them the answer because that's where the learning happens is in the struggle, as you all know. But you also have to realize some people, this is way out of their league. And if you can see the, the, the anxiety or the stress is too high, you give them a pat in the back and you give them a little nudge, right? And so you just use your professional judgment in terms of how much you want to give them. Um, on the site that I shared that I created, there are tutorials that kind of walk them through. And so the answer is there. Um, but I challenge them to try to create it on their own. And then they can always default back to that if they need to, because uh, there's, there's going to be one of you and there's going to be 20 to 30 of them. And so you can't get to all of them right away um, as you start to think about that. And so the silver tape, um, there's a lot of different tape. I know Jen's typing some things in here um, that it'll be in your package. If you need more, there is the, the thin little copper tape that you've probably done for like paper circuits and things. The silver tape that works the cheapest and teachers will ask you this question. It's the, the, the tape you use for like your dryer tubing in your vent, like that silver, it looks like duct tape, but it's silver, I, I can't think of the name of it right now. It's the cheapest and it works the best. Um, and so as we think about teachers and their budget, that little thin conductive packets of tape, which I've got sitting around somewhere, is really expensive. But that dryer tape that you put around your vents so that pushes the hot air out outside of your house, that works really, really well. Um, Jen also mentioned the graphite pencil. And so your kit will have this. They can buy these on, on Amazon. It's a 6B graphite pencil. Um, these are also conductive. And so the next step with the video game, when you move into that, is to, we, it's called Make It, Sketch It, where they sketch their own controllers as well. And so they can put this on paper, they clip the alligator clips to it, and the, the, the graphite pencil, the lead itself, is conductive and you can make your own, you can draw your own designs as well. And so there's a lot, a lot of possibilities in terms of um, making all this stuff happen. Um, and so you just kind of give them that morning to kind of work through the controllers, the graphite, um, and just have them kind of build out and play. The biggest challenge for them is to get them to create a four button controller um, using cardboard and the foil. Um, and so I have my one sitting around here somewhere. Um, that is the biggest challenge. A lot of them struggle with that because they, all the foil has to be separate. Um, they're all touching. It'll override as one button. And so in your cardboard, uh, if I had cardboard here, I would leave a gap. You know, if this is, if I were to use this graphite pencil, I'll just draw this in here real quick. And this graphite pencil could easily be, be foil as well. It doesn't have to be this. So just for the sake of this demo, it's going to be a little sloppy here, but you'll get what I'm saying. So this would be like one side of my controller where I've got these four sections of graphite um, here. This could also be pieces of foil tape that I put down. And then my alligator clips would clip to all these separately. And so this would be, you know, the up on the makey makey. This would be the down or right or left, however you want to code it. Now, some people will say, well, how in the world do I get my alligator clip to clip to this piece right here? So a couple things, you can either cut it out and make it smaller. Well, the other thing, and this is good for you guys, a lot of people don't think about this, is you can just puncture through. And so you can poke a hole from the backside, um, you know, and so I could just push through here. And as long as my metal is touching the foil that, the, the alligator clip is, is somehow connected to that foil graphite, it's gonna be conductive. So we have, in one of those flip, flip grid videos that you're gonna see on that site, um, we had a teacher make a power pad, if you remember the old power pad. So it's huge, and that's what we did. We, we soldered and built wires all on the underneath so there's no wires exposed. 
but when you got to get the wires to the top top piece of cardboard you got to hide all those and so we just kind of came through 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 the underside so there wasn't wires kind of janky all over the place um and so a lot of these things are around and that's what's nice about the Makey Makey is as they explore and test these things, they have a lot of these scrap materials. I mean, really the biggest cost to the Makey Makey is the Makey Makey itself. Um, and then if they, you know, if they need that conductive tape, um, they have that. You can make your own. So we've done stuff too with um, paint and like magnetic filings, anything metal, and you shave the little tiny pieces in there. Um, you can make your own conductive paint. There's all sorts of things that you can really get into to really kind of take this to a whole nother level uh, with teachers um, and for teachers to take it with their students. And so um, how are we feeling so far? I feel like I've, I'm throwing a lot at you and we're 40 minutes in. Um, what questions do we have about the training or the, or the makey makey? Is there anything you want to see? Uh, I've got a bigger project I can show you something that, that we've done um, from a classroom application. Um, so Jenny, you talked about the purchase, and Becky, I would assume that we're affiliate with Makey Makey, right? So we'll get them for the, the $20 discount. I mean, I don't know if you want to uh, Yeah, yes, that's correct. So we're charging about, I can't remember, I think uh, $35 maybe for these workshops, um, and that pays for the cost of the um, Makey Makey kit, and then also for those extra materials that everybody got uh, that you can hand out to all of your participants. Perfect. Does that help you, Jenna, on that and, registration? And if while he's getting ready to do his next set, guys, if we can talk about this too on a on a trainer call later. But if you're doing a makey makey workshop, um, we've got the, some extra makey makey kits, and then they've given us permission to what I call stockpile. Um, and that means that we can keep like 30 at the office. So if you're doing a makey makey workshop. Uh, for us, we can send you those, and then we'll order 30 more replacements, um, and then and then do that that way. Oh, Charity, um, I uh, let's talk later about that offline. The one question that you guys will get from teachers um, is, what is the cost, and can we get the same cost when they see that they paid say 35 for the Makey Makey? Um, the Makey Makey runs for teachers $50. Um, and so that discount does not apply to them uh, when they're trying to buy like a classroom set. So um, just something to keep in mind that discount is just for like the trainer workshops um, that are being offered by Making Making. They want to get it in the hands of teachers, but a teacher can't turn around and ask for a class set at that $20 a pop. Um, so just one little thing because they'll ask. Um, I just dealt with actually with my my wife's school district um, as just last week. So I'm doing a training with them next week on it. So um, just something to kind of think about um, with that. So Kyle, I know earlier you asked about the grounding with the uh, Makey Makey. So let me demo that again um, here for you one more time because uh, I know I was I, I was going I was going faster a little bit. And so once again, the the Makey Makey they call it the Earth. It's this whole bottom part here that's all metal. Um, this is the ground. So it'd be, you know, and, and like electric, if you do wiring or um, anything along those lines. So these just clip in to these slots here. Any of them, it doesn't, it, these, that does not matter. Um, and I'll show you that it doesn't matter here in just a minute on a bigger project. Um, the other alligator clips, then these think of these as all like your positive ter terminals. And so it just because I plug in the up doesn't mean that I have to have something in my code or my program go up. That's just the signal of the keyboard press. And so I'll show you here in Scratch um, how you can manipulate things here in uh, uh, just a minute. But I can plug this clip into the plus or for the up just for the sake of this. So then what I'll do then is in my ground, I'm just gonna put this into the Play-Doh since that's what I've been using as a button. And this could be anything. This could be cardboard and foil. Um, it could be, um, you know, a, a cup of water. Um, it could be a popsicle. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, just anything that's conductive. And then my up wire, I'll just go here. So what'll happen is obviously at this point, nothing's happening because the circuit is broke between these two pieces 
the electricity isn't flowing through. But, but myself as a human, I am conductive. And so when I push these, you'll see make you make you light up on the backside to show there's a signal. And so as I touch these two parts, it's popping up, it's showing that it's going to calibrate. And so that's would do whatever I would have programmed to do. So if I went to scratch and I said, when the key up key is pressed, then it would do whatever that, that code might be. So um, this is just how it um, I think I go to go through that. I don't know if that, that helped you there, Kyle. If not, just throw another message in there. My in that noise. Oh, that is good. Okay. So move over for a build that we've done with third graders. So we did a discovery day and we were exploring space. And so I went into a school um, and I wanted to show them how we make this stuff work. And Let's try to scoot back here a little bit and explain what I did. And I have a video on my site. So if you want to look just in more detail, um, it's kind of falling apart over time here. But studying space, there's some foam board here. And it just says Ursa Minor, the little dipper. And I know it's a little hard to see. It's reflective vinyl. We used a vinyl cutter to cut out and put our stuff on here. These are LED lights. And so when I plug this in here, um, I have created a little switch. I know it's a little hard to see because it's kind of far away here, but I've got this little button switch down here of an astronaut. And when I push this, this completes a circuit and um, it lights up my little dipper. And so you can see when I press the button, it lights up. Um, not only does it do that, but uh, I'm going to move over to screen sharing and I'll show you what we did. We had it was phenomenal what these third graders were creating. So I'm going to switch over to my screen. And so then we jumped into Scratch. And you can see here that now we started to manipulate different things on the Makey Makey. So I have an alligator clip, and I'll show you the backside here in just a minute, um, that's plugged into the space bar key. And when that's pressed in, in Scratch, I have it have a command. It says the stuff on the screen, which I'll show you here in a minute. And then it waits until I push the up arrow, which is also on the Makey Makey. So everything flows through the makey makey depending on the keys that i'm pressing and i don't know how familiar you guys are with scratch or not so um i'm assuming you've, you've at least seen it so i've got my different sprites that do different things and so i've got all these codes in here to be coded based on what i press on my makey makey and what happens um through this is i have a friend that's actually um he's a teacher but he's gonna he's doing two orbits up in space this summer and so this tells us to press the space bar um, to begin. And then this guy pops in and tells us to click the astronaut, which is on the Makey Makey board, which I'll, I'll show you here in just a minute when I get off the screen share. So when I press the astronaut, it lights up my little dipper. The little dipper is a constellation which is visible from Earth's northern hemisphere. It's also known as Ursa Minor, which is Latin for little bear. And it kind of looks like so I won't do the whole thing, but what kids were able to do were create these interactive displays. They were learning coding, they were learning physical computing, and they were then also learning how to bring their learning to life in the sense that someone could be able to come into their school and should be able to see their learning without them being there. So they had to learn how to record their voice, they had to learn how to speak, they had to learn how to write code that would manipulate that. And so it's all done do this button here that lights up the little dipper and it goes through. So um, what will happen is this, if you create something like this, here's what you, what's gonna happen. You're gonna see that I actually have seven lights on here. 
but there's not actually seven ports on the make you make on the front side. And so this gets them thinking about moving into the back. Um, and so if you want to learn more in detail, I won't go into every single thing in depth. This is that conductive tape. And I basically just ran circuits all the way down and the video will get into more detail. Um, and they're all alligator clipped to the bottom of that. And then they all run into a makey makey that, that's buried in there. And so it looks messy and maybe a little bit it is, but it was crazy what kids were able to do. I had students, third graders, um, building um, rockets out of cardboard and they were explaining like what space shuttle flight it was. It was just a really, really amazing day what they were able to do. Um, and once again, I mean, I did a little bit of vinyl cutting for here and here, but this is just recycled cardboard. And I don't know, we have a right down the road, or not down the road, about 10 minutes from me. Um, we know where the good dumpster um, bins are. And so we've got a company that throws like brand new cardboard in their dumpster every Thursday night. And so now I've, I've kind of shared the secret with teachers. You go in there and you get all the cardboard you want for free. Um, and it's clean and it's not dirty. It's as long as you're willing to put your pride uh, off to the side for a little bit to uh, go look in a dumpster. Um, but like Lowe's and Home Depot will give you big things of, of cardboard. Um, so we can have stuff where people do co uh, cardboard cutouts of like their students, um, full size. And then we'll have them, you know, program to say different things. And so there's just so many things that you can do. Um, with that makey makey as we get going. Um, this was another one, it's kind of falling apart a little bit, but this was done by a, a first grader um, and we rigged in a battery pack. So um, give it a little bit more power um, for our LED lights. But what, I don't know if you can see this, I don't know how close we can get, but the lights, this was for a Halloween prop. And so she created, um, her final one was a little bit bigger than this, a floor mat. So we created a sensor plate using um, construction paper and foil. So when someone stepped on their welcome mat for the trick-or-treating, it lit up the, the person's eyes and it, it was like she ended up doing a witch and it would scream. But what's kind of cool about these eyes is we used a candy mold and we filled it with hot glue and then we stuck the LED lights in. So these are actually gummy bear eyes. Um, and once again, just uh, an opportunity where kids love it. There's so many of these kids that have never used a hot glue gun. One, because their parents probably don't want them to. Um, two, teachers don't want, want to handle 30 kids using hot glue guns. But they were so excited with all that kind of stuff. And so it's amazing what a little bit of coding, like, and this was all it took. In this case, to get this girl excited about coding, she didn't want to code at all. But once we had gummy bear eyes, that's all she wanted to do. She wanted this to be a color and this to be a different color. And then we got into... You know, um, with these LED lights, they're fast flashing, so they change like eight different colors in the spectrum. And I was like, I'm having these conversations with these young kids, and half of them didn't have the confidence in themselves to think they could do these things. Um, so those are just some of those stories that will develop um, and, and why we need to, you know, get teachers confident with this actual um, um, kind of product. Yes, actual gummy bears would work great, too. You're absolutely right. Um, and... Um, the only thing with actually gummy bears, depending on where you're located, is sometimes they, they attract ants if you keep them out for a long time. So um, at least the hot glue molds work a little bit better um, if, for a longer duration. Um, here's another cheap little thing. And so I know in your kit you're going to have cardboard and you're going to have all sorts of different things to make switches. Here's this really cheap one that we do with kids where we just have – one piece of construction paper with foil and we have a little little flap that sticks out the side and then we have another one exactly the same but it comes out the other way so we can run our alligator clips to connect and then what we do is we cut another square piece of construction paper in the middle with a square poked out what this does it creates a little buffer so that when i put this in here just sitting here like this the foil doesn't touch. But if I were to press this, then it touched. And this is just another way to create a circuit or a, a, a switch. And this is what we use for the trick-or-treating to put underneath the, the kids' placemat outside their houses for the trick-or-treaters. So then when they step on the mat, this completed the circuit and then it would light up and make noise. And so there's all these simple little kind of cheap things that get kids really excited about um, all sorts of things. So thinking about electricity and coding and, and, and what the possibilities are. 
when we start to think about these things. And so this is another simple thing that I like to share with teachers uh, because it's quick and easy, um, which is which is really, really nice. Yeah, go ahead, ask a question, Kyle. I'm gonna show them this. Hey, can you hear me and see me? Um, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, um, I'm trying to figure out. I can scroll over to your screen. <laughs> Colin, do I need more. to? Uh, do I have control of the uh, stage, or do you, Aaron? I do not have control. No. Okay, so I can probably share with Kyle. Is that what you need, Kyle? Yeah, just I didn't know if you were able to turn on my camera yeah. so that others could see. Yeah, hang, hang on a second. I don't know how. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll see if I can take a screenshot or something. Um, so my little helper here and I, we are, uh, he tried to look, tried to hook up the cardboard. He colored it with the pencil. Um, and we have all that hooked to the Mickey Mickey as far as the directions, but, and then the ground to some Play-Doh, but we don't have it. It's not, it doesn't seem to be picking up the, the uh, circuit, the, so I didn't know what we, what we did wrong. It was my gotta, school pencil. Hold on. Uh, if it's a school pencil, yeah, it, so you need, um, it's uh, a, okay. it's a graphite, it's called a 6B, is a, is a kind of lead that's conductive. Your regular school pencil doesn't have enough graphite in them anymore to be conductive. I got you. Okay. All right. We'll try that. And you can buy those like at Walmart or Target. They're cheap on Amazon. Um, and then if it doesn't work, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta draw real dark too. All right. Got it. Hold on. Can you hear? Okay. Yeah, we'll try that. Thanks. Yep. So probably the the next step, maybe and we can kind of get to some questions here at the end, uh, but probably the really important part. So you're going to spend your morning working them through. It's kind of like the self-paced course, really. We're going to, you're going to show them. Um, oh, wait, I'm not, let me share my screen here. Sorry. I'm sitting here thinking you can see it and you can't. Um, Okay, so when we get into this, you're going to work in the morning, showing them what a circuit is, kind of explaining what the makey makey is. And it's really this, this self paced course, is, it's really just kind of the same kind of thing in the morning, showing them how to draw and sketch it, um, which is what Kyle is trying to work through. And I've got in here, you can kind of see, I think I got my example, mine's about coffee. Um, real surprise there, I know. Um, and you can kind of see how all this stuff works and that's in the morning to get them to play with the video games then it's kind of good to kind of, what i have found is at this point to kind of take an early lunch and kind of just let them take a minute to breathe but what you do before you release them to lunch you let them know that in the afternoon they're going to have a demo or a die and what that means is they're going to have the whole afternoon to come up with an idea to share to the group um, and they can make anything they want with the materials that are around. So it's nice to have um, extra cardboard, um, extra foam or styrofoam. When you're traveling, it's not always up to you to bring it, but I always try to encourage the, the whoever space I'm going, if you have any of that kind of stuff sitting around, um, to please bring that in um, so that they can kind of have that stuff to kind of tinker with. It doesn't need to be a lot. It doesn't need to be expensive or anything like that. Um, and I have a list that I can share. I'll get it on the site so you can kind of see like what I recommend when I go places. Um, and they basically then go through and will have that time to work either by themselves or in groups. Um, very rarely do I have someone to work on their own unless they have something really, really high end that they're going after. Um, and they're going to share at the end. So they get a time. So Typically, it's it's an hour and a half to an hour, just depending on the flow of the day. And so you set a timer and then, you know, set, a, set aside about a half hour or so for them to all share their projects. When I used to do this and when I went through the, the, the workshop myself as a participant, it was wide open to do whatever. Um, I personally change it. And so the demo or die has to be something that they can take back to their classroom tomorrow and implement. Um, and the reason that I, I do that is 
I don't want it just to be one day of learning that doesn't go anywhere. And so if they can think about, okay, tomorrow I'm going to do this with my kids, and then all those kids get excited, they're more likely to find a way to get more Makey Makeys and find projects with the Makey Makeys. Um, and then they're also going to get all that praise. And we know how important that praise is, whether we're getting it from our colleagues um, or in this case from students. And so if they get 25 students going, oh my gosh, that's so awesome. Like it just further empowers them. And that's just really where I've kind of been mentally lately. So I have them say, create something that they can use tomorrow um, um, in their classroom. And you don't have to do that. It's just something that I've been doing. And I find that it, it it keeps them from getting something that's too big and they actually get something more achievable. And then you get so much more follow-up in terms of, of that they've actually implemented something. And so that's all in here as well. And then um, in there, you'll see under the cell, I haven't, I need to maybe move this around, but that's why I said, when you get a chance on your own time, you look through these flip grades, you can see what teachers have created. Um, and so I giving you the password there. Um, and it's just phenomenal what they've come up with. I've had teachers that have created um, a whole entire puppet show, like a whole puppet booth. Uh, we've talked about the power pad. We have just done, I've seen teachers just create so many phenomenal things, um, their own interactive storybooks. I saw a teacher create like their own family feud timer. And so the kids came up and they'd have to smack the, the, the button to chime in for the family feud. Um, I've seen people use it for like a therapy room where they had like a, a cardboard house and it was just where a kid needed to go for a time out. And it was just kind of like little like soothing noises and thoughts and reminders. Um, there was one teach school that created their, their school logo for the hallway and they were a, a PBIS school. And so each letter gave them a question when they were waiting in the hallway to go into the, to the cafeteria. It would give them a question for them to have conversations around. And then the librarian just changed the questions each week. It was all about how to be a good student, a good listener. Um, and so all these things just start to develop. And so that's where I like to circumnavigate back to the flip grid. And I tell them before they present to the whole um, whole room to practice on flip grid and share it. And then that way we get to keep those. And so we can share those out with other teachers and they can gather all those ideas and steal them from other people because it's amazing what they come up with. And so um, that's just kind of how you wrap up. And that whole afternoon is just them to work. And you just kind of circle around and just kind of give them some ideas, give them some feedback, but it's really got to be theirs. And it's really what I find at that point, you're more of a, of a cheerleader. Um, oh my gosh, you're doing amazing. Yeah. You know, all that good stuff. And so, um, that's, I think, the, the, the real key in empowering this, because if we can model that, then they're more willing to go back and model that in their own classroom. So, um, and that's just kind of how you how you wrap up the day there. Um, and so, I mean, that's, for, for, for this particular session, I mean, I'm more than willing to, as you guys get diving into um, the Makey Makey itself when your kits arrive, I mean, we do some more hands-on, but it's kind of a bust if you don't have them. Um, feel free to, to reach out and ask questions. I have no problem making tutorials. I mean, any of you that know me, I've got 10,000 videos, well not 10,000, I have about a thousand videos on YouTube. I, I love doing it so I can, I'm here to help you. Uh, email me and we can just connect one-on-one -on -one if you get stuck. Um, but really I think it, it, it's one of my, my favorite workshops um, because every time you do it, you walk away with so many more ideas from, from the educators who come up with cool things. Um, and so, yeah, uh, best way to reach me, yeah, uh, Twitter works, email works. I mean, any of those, I'm, I always tell people, um, I mean, I always say I'm a, I'm a social media whore because I'm always on social media. Again, there's maybe that's something that I have it I got to fix. But uh, if you reach out to me, I'm, I'm, I'm readily available to help whenever I can. So um, I don't know. I mean, I've given you guys a lot. I don't want to overwhelm you here with, more and more and more. If you, I feel like I've given you ten thousand ideas, but I'm definitely willing to stick around. Questions that you have, or other things that didn't make sense, or things about the workshop, or whatever it is that you have. I mean, feel free to leave it in the chat. Um, or other things that you want to know why we're here, but I also know that you're all really, really busy, busy people as well. So, um, and I don't know, Heidi, is there anything else that you want to add from your side of things that put you on the spot here um, or anything that we left out that you want covered in this first session? No, it's always a pleasure, Erin, that you you are here sharing today. But I really what I want to turn it over to uh, to Shannon because she jumped on the call. And, you know, it's her first 
The first month, come on. Sure. Shannon, are you there? <laughs> I'm not positive Shannon can talk still. Well, she's texting hey. me that she can. Hey, can you can you hear me? Oh, we can. Hey, I'm so sorry. I've I've been where you couldn't hear me. I couldn't get my sound to work and it was just craziness. Um, but hey, thank you for everybody that jumped on. And Aaron, you just did a fabulous job. Um I just I just can't believe how wonderful you are. And so we appreciate you so much. If you didn't get your kit, um, we may, I may have missed your name um, in the invite. So I did send them to everyone that had accepted the invite. Probably it was probably a, around the first week of um, June. But if you're on the call and you didn't get it, if you'll just send me an email, I'll be glad to follow up with you and get that kit right out to you. I mean, some of them must still be on the way because some people that said that they didn't get their kit, I believe we did send it to them. So guys, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate your time on the trainer call and we really appreciate your time tonight on the Makey Makey. Um, we're just committed to continuous growth and um, letting our trainers do calls like this. Um, I think that's really going to help us and it just allow us to be better and better. So thank you, Aaron, for kicking that off. Sure. Yeah, and like I said, too, as we guys get going, uh, Kyle, I saw your message. Anybody else, I mean, more than willing to help out. I mean, it's it's, it's what I do, and I actually have a job that allows me to do that all the time, and so it's it, it's it's wonderful. Um, and like I said, we'll be re I'll be releasing the Level 2 self-paced course on this soon. Um, and I'll get the rest of the student teacher projects. Um, they just actually submitted their their designs. And so I have a couple phenomenal teachers that have tons of student projects with these. Um, and I just need to I just need to edit it all together and get it on there. But um, there's tons of stuff on there, uh, tons of resources and all sorts of things. And so if you get stuck on where to find things, uh, especially as you start to look at, um, I've got a document on that website of where I buy my LEDs and my DC battery stuff. It's maybe not so much stuff for your, for you yourself for the training, but it's stuff for teachers because they don't know always know where to look. And so it's more for them um, to go buy that stuff in bulk. And um, we can go from there. And the other thing I have will be coming out soon is like how you take like old machines. And, and you know, I always tell teachers you should never pay for wires. Uh, you should never pay for DC motors or any of that stuff because those are all in old electronics. You know, you can take a VCR apart. It's a good take apart uh, activity for kids, but not just to smash, but a typical VCR has six to eight DC motors. So you can pull those out um, and then repurpose those. So there, there's ways to do things um, within a school culture um, that you can get into with kids. And so I, I'm working on getting all that onto that site here soon so you guys can have those, those things as well. Yes, I need to get that bow tie. <laughs> For sure. Okay, guys. So, Aaron, you think we can go ahead and wrap that up then? Yeah, I think so. I think I think there's enough for them to chew on. I think once they get their kits, they'll have questions. But until then, maybe we we can we we need to do a follow up once everybody gets their kits, and that I think that might be be a good time to kind of bounce back. So I'm sure they'll have some questions then. Okay, so we may do that in a couple of weeks. We may try to let things settle down just a little bit since June's so crazy, and yeah. then we'll check back in. And um, I'm not sure if you mentioned this before because I've just I've been in and out, but we're going to put all of the the call recording and all of um, the, the things that Aaron has in the team on the Makey Makey channel for the NCC trainers team. So just check there; we'll have that all there. That's that's good, right, Aaron? Yeah, that's, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. and I'll, I'll load some more stuff in there over the next couple of days as well. Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate every, appreciate everybody's time. Yes, Thanks, thank guys. You the Aaron, thank Thanks. you so much. Oh, no problem. This has been great. It's what I love, so I appreciate it. It's been awesome, awesome, awesome. Go out there and change okay. the world, guys. Bye, guys. Enjoy your evening. See you later.